Hey guys, so in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Jasma 105 amp hour, 48 volt golf cart battery. So I've looked at quite a few golf cart batteries in the last year. One of the reasons why is golf carts are just getting more and more popular. I've seen a couple articles recently where people are using them for their daily drivers in suburbs and stuff like that. So that, yeah, that's one of the reasons why is because the batteries are becoming more popular because more and more golf carts are on the road, even they're uh, street legal. Second reason why is money. I get paid for a lot of these golf cart battery reviews. So I ask for a fee to review these. So if, yeah, if you guys are wondering about the motivation for those videos, the first motivation is to be able to show you guys different batteries in case you're interested in shopping around and seeing what they each have and what they look like inside. The second motivation is, like I mentioned, it's a monetary motivation. I am trying to earn some cash. So yeah, um, that that's, I just wanted to be open about that. So Josma contacted me shoot it's probably three months ago they sent out a battery and i was actually going to make a video about it but fortunately so the video i was going to make about it was how not to build a golf cart battery the inside of that battery was the worst i have seen in any of the battery builds that i have looked at so i emailed photos to jasma and they said that was a prototype fortunately so since then, I've been waiting on this battery, and I think it's been close to three months, right? Might be two months and some change. I could check on that. So they sent this directly from China. Unfortunately, during shipping, it got banged up. I'm not sure if you guys can make it out. I'll show you the top in a minute. But yeah, this got scraped up here. But the other battery, like I mentioned, did not look nice. It was in the same case as this, though, which is sort of disappointing. They don't have their name on it. It's sort of just a generic case. Yeah, the inside, man, everything from really small wire gauges to wire leads from the battery cells, the balance leads that were just going over like hard plastic that could fray and tear. There was a bunch of things that was wrong with that. This one, we'll look and see what it looks like on the inside. I'm hoping for better things. And I would think since they sent it direct from China and they worked on it, or that was a prototype, either way, that this will look a lot better inside. This comes with a 200 amp BMS in it, so you can get 200 amps of charge and discharge. Of course, they have it recommended lower. I would definitely, um, you know, stick to lower also. It also comes with a screen. A lot of the basics we've seen in some of the other batteries, this has a JBD BMS in it. So you can use the Overkill app. You can use the JBD app as well. You can change parameters in that. You can uh, look at all the different temperature sensors, all that stuff. Price point in this battery, pretty competitive no heaters in this nothing fancy that i know of but we'll look inside and see in just a minute but yeah the price is right around a thousand dollars i think somewhere in that neighborhood they do send some stuff in the kit i'll show you that in just a minute let's look at the outside of the battery then i'll pop it apart see improvements hopefully improvements on the inside and i was just about to get up but the capacity i did a capacity test on this also we were just shy of, we were like at 104.7 so it might with a couple more discharges and charges it might get up to that 105 or above range sometimes we check these 105 amp hour golf cart batteries and we'll end up getting above 107 but yeah this was a smidge below actually things that came with it a little bit light on the accessories when you compare it to some of the other batteries i've reviewed so no straps nothing fancy here but they do have some clips both of these i think just are for just mounting the screen they give here manual of course extra set of m8 bolts screws for the screen again and they have these two where you can screw them in somewhere on the golf cart it does come with a 20 amp waterproof charger to charge the battery outside of the case again very generic nothing fancy here the screen was on top of the battery for the shipping so it ended up rubbing here the whole way i guess uh, again i think part of that would probably be because they sent this direct from china so it would be shipped differently probably if it's going to come to you guys Business side of the battery. This is the only other thing with anything on it. On it, You can use the flange here to be able to screw into the golf cart. If you've got a nice tray to be able to do that on. We've got positive and negative terminals, like I mentioned before, M8 bolts. We have the on-off for the BMS switch there. Vent. And then this RS-45 is where the screen is going to plug into. So that's pretty much it on this end. <laughs> All right, let's see what we look like in here. All right, so much better job <laughs> than I saw on the first one. Yeah, when I opened the first one up, I actually busted out laughing. This is the same size 
metal case you're going to see with a lot of other battery brands for golf carts. But in their case, they have this massive space in the middle. So they have two foam blocks that are just kind of flopping around. This was set up right here when I opened it up. And that's it. That is your spacer <laughs> between here. But uh, this is, this looks better. Um, yeah. So this is simple, you know, and I'm actually a fan of simple. I mentioned that when I look at uh, some of the watt cycle batteries, they're usually the one that I comment on the most about simplicity. But uh, yeah, I mean, these, these, and I've seen this in other battery builds too, but these little sticky pads that they've got running along on top of this resin board, they use that to run their wire leads and kind of bunch them and keep them together. I would rather see a shielded cable um, tied to this bar here rather than try to stick it all to a pad. So I realize you've got another resin board on top here that's protecting it from the lid. That's fine. And these are technically keeping everything bunched in one area. But, and I've mentioned this on another build recently too. I think we're to the point now where every battery build we see should have shielded cable. We should have nice shields on all of this. Doesn't really matter over here. But on all this cable here, in case it could fray or touch anything else, why not have it all bundled up, cinch strapped down, zip tied down in a nice bundle all the way through? Uh, this, I mean, this might look good when they're putting it together and sticking it to this little pad. But yeah, in the long run, one of the keys to golf cart batteries is the fact that you're going to have so much motion over time. You really don't want anything popping loose, fraying, rubbing against anything. So having a shielding around it, Having it zip tied is really the way to go. That's not necessarily the end of the world there. That's just a gripe of mine when I see that now, something that doesn't have shielding on it. Also, we have four gauge cable here. So generally speaking, with the 200 degrees Celsius four gauge cable, we're kind of considering 125 amps continuous output. Since this is a 200 amp BMS and it can technically output 200 amps continuous, I would think they'd have larger cable in here for it. Sometimes in these golf cart batteries, you'll see two five gauge cables. You'll see two gauge cable. But yeah, to me, the four gauge is a little light here for what we're talking about outputting amperage wise. I can't see the cells themselves. They've got resin board over top of them and all these wire leads here. So I'm not gonna be able to get to the cells. So they actually put the board over top of the cell and then they laser welded the bus bar. So there's no way to actually pop that apart to look at the barcode on the cells. They certainly didn't go light with the globs of this white goo though. They had access points here. You could see to be able to, once everything was built, then they squeezed this mess in there to keep these lugs on the main positive and negative. And that's the thing. This is a generic box that they're kind of just putting every sliding everything in. So you've got a lot of extra space down here with absolutely nothing in it. Not that that's a bad thing. I mean, having extra space for the BMS is nice. That way there's not a heat dissipation issue. I'll plug the screen in here and we can pop one of these temperature sensors off right here. Let's see if we can get the BMS to disconnect with under temperature. But I don't anticipate any issues, but there you can see we're charging just a little shy of 5 amps. We'll put this temperature sensor into some ice water. And we can go on to page 2, I think, shows the temperatures. Yeah, so minimum's already minus 2 degrees Celsius. We're still charging, though. Let's see. This should kick off here. In just a second, I would think. Yep, just turned off. Yep. So, we'll remove it from wa the water. Again, JBD BMSs are very reliable. So, I don't usually have any issues with the temperature sensors on there. There we go. And charging again. So you guys get a better look at the screen. This is almost the exact same screen you'd see on a Vatra battery. We've got a lot of good details here. They'll show all the basic stats you'd want to see, and they do have individual cell voltage on the third page. I didn't focus too heavily on the BMS side. There's just not a lot to look at. 
You can't really even get a look at the JBD BMS because they've got this little grill over top of it. Um, yeah, I mean, wire management isn't terrible. The wire leads just come right off of there into the BMS. And then we've got, what do we have here on the negative side? We've got four 8-gauge, 200-degree Celsius wires going into the main positive. Yeah, so if I had to describe the build, like they basically just made a case of this resin board around a group of 105 amp hour cells if i had to describe the build i'd say yeah it's not the worst i've seen actually their first battery was the worst i've seen like i mentioned uh but not exactly yeah it's pretty basic here um uh, there could be a lot of uh, little improvements some of them i mentioned already um you know think things like the vatra battery that that uh mat that they've got over the top that pcv board you don't necessarily have to go that fancy with it but um yeah, I mean, this could use some work. They must have foam that I just can't see around the whole sides because you can see a slight gap in between the resin board and the frame. So they've probably got some foam lined around there too, which is good. That's a good thing. Yeah, considering this little sticky tape operation here and uh, the gauge of wire that we've got on the main positive and negative, I think it could be better. All right, guys, so to wrap things up, like I sort of mentioned in the beginning, this is a generic sort of battery. So generic BMS, which I don't have any problem with that. Generic isn't always bad, right? I like JBD BMSs. The screen is similar to what we've seen in some other batteries. The build quality is not as nice as, well, it's not as nice as any other golf cart battery I've reviewed so far. Granted, some of them are more expensive. So the Husky battery we've reviewed in the past, uh, definitely fancy, had heaters. The Vatra would be probably be the next down uh, that had that PCB mat that I mentioned before. Really, really nice build quality, but somewhere around $1,400. And like I said, these are somewhere in that $1,000 to $1,100 range. Um, the lead time would probably be the closest in comparison to this price-wise. I, I think it's in the $900 something range, but it's only 100 amp hour, not 105. And I think the discharge limit was less on the lead time. But yeah, better build quality overall. If you look at that video, I can put that above. So yeah, while I appreciate the fact that they have definitely updated things over the first model that they sent me, yeah, I mean, again, eh. To me, if you're going to stand out in the market the way it is right now, you need something, whether it is super high quality or it might be super low price. Uh, and this kind of doesn't fit into any of those categories. And that lead time did have some different communication protocols and some things that kind of made it stand out in a different way. The Temgo that I reviewed, that's been months back. That stood out in the fact that it was just such a low price. I think that was 700 something dollars. Anyway, yeah, if I were them, I would rebrand things at least. Get something that shows your brand on the box here. I don't know, stand out in some way. Not that you have to be like have all kinds of bells and whistles and stuff like that. But yeah, just to get noticed anyway. All right, guys. And as always, I will leave a link in the description to the battery here. If you guys have any questions on it, let me know. Thank you guys for watching and stay tuned.